Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Joe Kenny, and I am a cigar reviewer for Cigar Public. You may also know me as Jonas Cigars on YouTube and Instagram. I have been a reviewer for Cigar Public for the last year and I'm very excited to get started on another round of reviews for CigarPublic.com. I wanted to do an unboxing review to give kind of an expose about what cigar reviews look like for all the reviewers here at for Cigar Public and give you an idea of how that process works. We ask for cigars whenever we are ready for them and the delivery department sends them in boxes like these and inside each box we get these humidified bags complete with Bovida pack humidification so that we get cigars shipped to us in the proper conditions. Each one of the cigars are numbered one through four. We get four cigars and two samples of each cigar. And uh, we have no bands on these cigars. As you can see right here, they're simply numbered one, two, three, and four. There are zero bands on this, so we have absolutely no idea what it is that we're smoking until after we've submitted the review and eventually find out who the brand and manufacturer is. So. How we go about doing reviews, there's a number of categories that we grade the cigar on. It all totals up to 100 points, but there are a number of different categories. Construction, burn, draw, flavor complexity, flavor enjoyability, smoke output and texture, and overall experience. We'll start first with construction. What does that mean? Construction basically means the appearance of the cigar, the shape of the cigar, how well is the cigar put together. A lot of that has to do with how good the wrapper looks. So I'm gonna take out the first cigar in this pack, number one, and give a quick close-up of this cigar. As you can see, there are a few veins, but they're pretty minimal and they're nicely flush. Nicely even rolled cigar with even coloring to the wrapper leaf. A nicely applied cap on the top, a little bit of unevenness on the roll of the cigar when you're looking at the foot. There looks to be a little bit of pressing right there. But beyond that, it looks like a pretty good cigar. So based on the appearance, I'd be taking minimal points off of the score for construction. Another element of construction is the integrity of the ash. We obviously don't want a super flaky ash. The tighter the ash, the better. And uh, I'm not really into looking for those Instagram worthy ash sort of lengths. You know, the ones that are like four or five inches long. I'm happy with one and a half inches. If the ash is holding on to one and a half inches, that's probably just fine for me. Any more than that actually tends to interfere with the burn integrity so I try to avoid having ashes longer than that. So if the ash holds on for an inch, an inch and a half, I'm usually pretty happy with the ash integrity. So that basically constitutes the construction of the cigar uh, and there are 20 points allotted to this category. I basically, for most of these categories, start with the maximum. I'll start with 20 and just start taking off points if there's anything negative to speak of. So let's say the ash is really flaky or if it falls off really easily without much provocation, well, it might lose a point or two for that. If the uh, wrapper is applied sloppily or if there is a bunch of veins or knobs or soft spots or squishy parts of the cigar, or if the cigar isn't rolled particularly evenly, those are all gonna be ways that the score can be affected negatively and might have the score come down a few points. Moving on, we'll talk about the burn. This is a pretty straightforward category. There's allotted 15 points total for this category. Burn is all about how straight the burn line is. It, we wanna have a nice razor sharp burn. So if we had a cigar that as soon as you started lighting it evenly, it burned razor sharp from start to finish, well, basically you'd get full 15 points for that. If we had a burn that wasn't problematic, but was never really straight, always just had a little bit of waviness to it, you're probably going to lose a point for that. If I had to do a burn touch up on the cigar because it was canoeing to a point where it really wasn't going to catch up, you might lose more than one point, probably two or three points, just depending on how bad the canoeing was. Let's say you had a cigar that just for no reason just went out. You weren't puffing on it too infrequently. It just decided to up and go out on you. Well, that's a problem with the burn too, and that's going to deduct some points from the score there as well. Third category we're looking at is the draw. Now the draw is a significant part of the cigar overall experience. And so we give 15 points for this particular category. We obviously don't want a cigar that draws way too tight. That's no fun. You feel like you're gasping for air at the end. You're not getting enough smoke. You're not getting enough flavor. You're missing out on something and you know it every time you have a draw that's way too tight or even plugged. On the other hand, you also don't want a cigar that's drawing way too loose. Oftentimes that ends up with a burnt tongue or palate, scorched flavors, cigar burning way too hot. That's no good either. You want a cigar that has a nice, even draw, little bit of resistance, but not too much. And so we have points up to 15 that can be allotted to the draw. 
the draw can make or break a cigar and that's why 15 points are given to this particular category. Moving on, we are going into flavor complexity, and this is where the work as the reviewer really kind of comes into play. You have to have a pretty good palate to pick out different flavor nuances and aromas, both on the draw and the retrohale, to come up with the complexity rating of the cigar. The way I work complexity is you get one point for every flavor nuance that I pick up throughout the duration of the cigar. Now this goes both for the retrohale and the draw. Sometimes I'll get notes that are exclusive to the retrohale. That still lends itself to the complexity of the cigar overall. So this is one category where I actually start from the bottom as opposed from the full score and work my way backwards. I actually start at zero and go up just depending on the number of flavor notes I get. This is the way I do it, this is the way I've always done it, and I think it's a pretty good system to come up with an overall complexity rating. Next category is probably going to be the most subjective of all the categories we have in the rating system at Cigar Public, and that is flavor enjoyability. Everybody's palate is going to be different. There's going to be nuances that people like more than others, and so it's going to stand to reason that some cigars are going to score higher depending on who it is that's reviewing the cigar. This is all part of the reviewing game in cigars and there's really no way to get around it. You have to have some element of subjectivity because let's face it, taste is subjective. But we do try to condense the subjectivity category to really one category and that is flavor enjoyability. This is a category that gets 20 points possible for the rating and flavor enjoyability basically talks about the flavor quality and the flavor balance. So we have flavors that we pick up that are really enjoyable and they're really easy to detect. Let's say I got a really, really clear smooth dark chocolate on this draw once and that was a flavor that I was really enjoying and it was really easy to pick out. Well, that talks about how clear the flavor is and the quality of the flavor. Flavor balance is basically how all the flavors in the myriad of flavors you might be getting work together. Let's say you've got that uh, oaky and nutty and somewhat vegetal notes coming through on one cigar, but then all of a sudden you get a weird ginger spice that just throws everything off. Or there's a flavor in there on the draw or retrohale that's just way too sharp. Or let's just say some of the black pepper was just way too heavy and it really threw off the rest of the flavors of the cigar. This is part of what we talk about when we're talking about flavor enjoyability. You want things to be tasting clear and clean. You also want things to be balancing with each other. You want all the flavors playing well with all the other kids in the sandbox. You don't want conflict. So if you've got harmony and quality, you're gonna have a high cigar rating in the flavor enjoyability. Next category is smoke output and texture. This is a fairly self-explanatory category. We want to know how much smoke is coming out. Obviously, the more smoke, the better in most cases. And the smoke texture, we're basically looking at how does the smoke feel in the mouth when we're drawing on the cigar. Is it too dry? Is it too wet? Is it too thick? Is it too chewy? These are all things that could negatively affect the score of the texture and smoke output. There are five points allotted to smoke output and texture, so it doesn't really have as significant a role in the overall score as, say, the enjoyability or the burn. Last but not least, we have the overall experience, another category that allows for five points. Basically, if you have an outstanding cigar that was enjoyable from start to finish, you don't have much to complain about, you're going to give this one a five on the overall enjoyability. Let's say you had a cigar that was mostly good. There were just a few things you wish were different, or maybe just the last inch or so kind of dried up on the flavor, or the smoke texture got way too hot in the last few minutes or so. You'd probably give that one a four. If you had a cigar that was decently good, not great, but fine, that's probably a three on the overall score. If you had a cigar that was mostly not that great, there were some moments to it that were enjoyable, but overall you probably wouldn't reach for it again, that's gonna be a two. And then if you have a cigar that was just absolute crap and you never wanted to see it again, that's pretty clearly gonna be a number one. Beyond the seven categories, we also have a few other fields that we do like to fill in. Things like the pre-light aromas off the body of the cigar, the pre-light aromas we get off of the foot of the cigar, notes that we get on the cold draw. These are all things that we put in each and every review before everyone gets to the seven scoring categories. We also have a breakdown of the flavors that we get on the first, second, and final third of each cigar so that the reader of each review can see what the flavor notes we were experiencing throughout the entirety of the smoke. 
We will have towards the end of the cigar a field that has a score justification. Basically, the reviewer gets to articulate how and why we got to a certain point of scoring on a particular category. For example, let's say the score on the burn was a 16. Pretty good, not perfect. We might have something in there like we had to do a burn touch up at about the halfway point of the cigar. Not a huge deal, but enough to bring the score down. It was never a razor sharp burn, always kind of wavy. Nothing particularly egregious but definitely not a perfect burn so we might bring it down as many as four points for that particular category that would be a decent explanation in the score justification lastly we have a field to give overall notes or thoughts on the cigar to kind of close everything up this is where things like uh good drink pairing ideas or the best time of day to smoke the cigar might be a good place to put in for the reader to use. Uh, I also put things like how long the sm cigar smoked. I usually put a general smoke time at the end of most of my reviews just so the reader has a little bit more information before going into the cigar themselves. So this is how we do the cigar reviews at Cigar Public. I hope this video was informative for you and offered some transparency in how we do things. And I hope you come back often to CigarPublic.com for many more great reviews and articles in the future. See you guys on the next review. Till next time, smoke a good one.